Hello and welcome to another video. If someone was to offer you free money, would you take it? Of course you would. However, too many people are leaving free money on the table. Here in the UK, the UK government is encouraging people to save and invest money for retirement by giving them tax breaks. And if you can pay less tax or get a little bit more money free, then that's great. The two ways in which the UK government enables people to do that is through a lifetime ISA or personal pension. So in this video, I'm going to compare and contrast each of the different products and run the numbers so you can find out which one is best for you. So let's get going with the video. As always, before we get going with the video, please make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any further videos. Saving for retirement can be pretty daunting. You might be really young right now and thinking that you need the money and you don't need to invest it for the future. However, in reality, no one wants to live like a pauper when they come to retirement. That's a time when they've worked for many years and they want to enjoy life. So here in the UK, the UK government encourages people to store that money and save it for retirement so that when they come to retire, they can live that life of luxury, as we've seen our grandparents and parents do. There are two products in which the UK government encourage people to save for retirement. The most well-known is a self-invested personal pension. This is separate to your company pension or any other state pension that you may have, and this is the money in which you personally invest for your own future. The other product, which is more recent, is called a Lifetime ISA, or a LISA. And this product is only open for certain people at certain ages, however, is quickly becoming an extremely popular way in which people save for retirement. So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what each of the two are, how each of the two work, and run the numbers and compare both the Lifetime ISA against a self-invested personal pension. So first up, we have the LISA, or the Lifetime ISA. I ran through this in detail when I covered the four different types of ISA in my ISA breakdown. So let's just run over quickly what a lifetime ISA does. There are a couple of qualifications for a lifetime ISA. That is that you're between the ages of 18 and 40, and you can use the money that you invest into a lifetime ISA for two reasons, buying a house or retiring. And finally, you can only invest 4,000 pounds a year. However, the government will give you a 25% top up on that money. That means that if you invest the full £4,000 per year, the government will give you an extra £1,000. However, if you only invest £100, the government will give you an extra £25. It's a great product, meaning that you can invest in cash, as you would have a cash ISA if you need the money in the short term, or in stocks and shares if you're investing that money for the long term. However, you can only withdraw money from a lifetime ISA for three reasons. The first is that you're a first-time buyer and using that money as your deposit for a house up to £450,000. The second is that you're over 60 years old and you're drawing that money down as part of your retirement. And third is that you're terminally ill. However, if you need to withdraw your money for any other reasons than the ones I've just listed, you will be hit by a 20% penalty, which will effectively wipe off the bonus. What is great about a lifetime ISA is that it's part of that ISA family, which means that all money that's been invested and all gains that you get from capital gains, dividends, or interest payments will all be tax-free now and into the future. So in this case, I'm going to be talking about a lifetime ISA as a specific tool for retirement, not for buying a house, only for retirement, and comparing this to another product which is well known in UK, it is called a self-invested personal pension, or a SIP. So what is a SIP? A SIP is a self-invested personal pension. And this is a pension in which you invest yourself. This is separate from any company pension that you might have or the state pension. This is one in which you personally transfer money into and you decide how it's invested. This gives you a much greater amount of freedom on how you want to invest your money to suit your specific needs. And as you know, no one cares about your money more than you do. So this is a great way to really take control of that money and really plan for your long-term retirement. Pensions are far more complicated than ISAs. So here I'm gonna try and give you a broad overview of exactly how pension works and how this compares to a lifetime ISA. However, if you do need specific advice, always do your research and go and speak to specific advisors who will be able to help you and understand your exact specific needs. Any UK resident who's under the age of 75 can pay into a personal pension and the government will pay you a certain percentage bonus depending on your income when you pay that money into your personal pension. This is because a pension is called a tax deferred account. A tax deferred account is an account in which the government will give you money back in which you paid on in your income for investing into a certain product, such as a personal pension. As an example, if you earn £1,000 and you were taxed at 20%, you'd pay £200 tax, meaning that you have taken home £800. Now, if you took that £800 and invested it into a personal pension, the government would give you back that £200. 
meaning the money that's now in your personal pension would be up to a thousand pounds. However, because this is a tax deferred account, the government is giving you this tax back right now. However, at some point in the future, they will tax you on that money. So please bear that in mind. This is mutually beneficial for both the government and you as an individual. It means that you as an individual get more money to invest and when you come to retire and draw down that money, the government benefits because they'll be taking more money off you with the anticipation that you'll be drawing down more money into the future. So back to the personal pension. A personal pension you're not allowed to draw down until you hit the age of 55. However, this is going to rise into 57 in 2028. And for when I retire, who knows how old it will be. And just to bear in mind, the maximum amount you can invest into a personal pension is £1,073,100. The biggest difference between a lifetime ISA and a personal pension is the fact that you are charged tax in different ways. With a lifetime ISA, because it's part of the ISA family, means that any gains on dividend, capital gains or interest that you may make will be protected by that tax wrapper and they'll never be taxed. However, with a personal pension, you are charged tax. You are allowed to draw down a 25% lump sum in one go, which will be tax free. However, after that, you'll be taxed at your rate of income. Very much like a salary, when you come to retirement and draw down your income, the amount that you'll be taxed will vary depending on how much you want to pay yourself. Which means that the more that you earn and the more that you pay yourself, the more you get taxed. So in essence, you want to pay yourself as little as possible. However, no one wants to live like a pauper when they retire. You don't want to spend the last 40 or 50 years of your life working only to live near poverty and not enjoy yourself. So it's a big trade-off. So the real question is how do they compare? If you can only choose a lifetime ISA or a personal pension and you're eligible, meaning that you're under the age of 40, which one should you choose and which one should you invest into? So here we're gonna do an apples to apples comparison. This might not be perfect and might not be the most tax efficient way of drawing down money. However, for simplicity and comparing a lifetime ISA to a personal pension, this is the easiest way to do it. And obviously everybody's individual circumstances will be different. First, let's have some assumptions so you can understand an apples to apples comparison. So let's say you start investing at the age of 30 and because a lifetime ISA is only available when you hit the age of 60, we'll say that that's when you retire. So 30 years of investing. The maximum you can invest into a lifetime ISA is £4,000 a year. So that'll be the maximum amount that you're going to invest either into a lifetime ISA or a personal pension. And being conservative, we're going to say that you have an annual return of 7%, which is a diversified portfolio in both stocks and bonds. This is actually below the returns that you'd get in the FTSE 100 or S&P 500. However, this is a balanced portfolio, which is probably best for most people. And to make it fair, and an apples to apples comparison, we're only going to invest up into the age of 50, which is what you have to do if you're in a lifetime ISA. I appreciate if you're investing into a personal pension, you can invest right up into the age in which you retire. However, obviously we want to compare both of these on a similar basis to understand which one is actually better. So first up, we have the lifetime ISA. So we're starting at the age of 30 and we're investing £4,000 per year. The government will add a 25% top up, meaning that your investment per year is £5,000. Therefore, the maximum in which you personally have invested has been £80,000 over the 20 years between the age of 30 and 50. And the government has topped up an extra £20,000, meaning your total investment of money paid in is £100,000. Therefore, after 30 years of investing at 7% and paying in for 20 years, your investment is worth just over £400,000. And that isn't a bad return for only investing £80,000 for 30 years. So next up, we have pensions. And as I mentioned earlier, pensions are more complicated than ISAs. This is because the government will pay you a certain bonus depending on the income band that you're in when you pay that money into a pension. There are three income bands in the UK. There's basic, higher and additional. Basic is for someone who earns less than £50,000. A higher rate tax is for someone who earns between £50,000 and £150,000. An additional rate tax is paid by people who earn over £150,000. First up, we're going to look at the basic taxpayer. And this is for someone who earns less than £50,000 per year, meaning that the government will pay you your 20% tax back that you've already paid. So using the example that I used earlier, when you earn £1,000 and you're taxed £200, Whilst you were taxed 20%, when the government pays you back the money that you've invested, so you invested £800, they're paying you £200. £200 of £800 is actually 
So if you just think about it as this being a 25% bonus on your money. So now going back to compare it to lifetime ISA, you're investing £4,000 per year and the government is topping that up with the tax you've already paid on your £4,000 of income, meaning that they're topping you up by £1,000, which is effectively a 25% bonus. This means that each year you're investing £5,000, very similar to a lifetime ISA. So as before, you're only investing £80,000. However, that's topped up by the government to £100,000, which means that your money after 30 years of compounding at 7% is exactly the same as a lifetime ISA, meaning that that pot is worth just over £400,000. Now remember, this is pre-tax and pensions are taxed. So in these examples, I'm going to say that, that you draw down 25% of your pension pot completely tax-free. And then that other 75% is taxed at the higher rate tax because you're drawing it all down in one go. I appreciate that probably isn't the most tax efficient way of drawing down a pension. However, as I said earlier, we're doing an apples to apples comparison. So using the basic taxpayer example, you have a retirement portfolio of just over 400,000 pounds. You draw down 25% tax-free, meaning that you've just paid yourself 100,000 pounds tax-free. Now, that 300,000 pounds is going to be taxed as if you've just earned 300,000 pounds of income in that year. So ultimately you'll hit the additional tax rate limit. So once the tax has been removed, your portfolio is actually worth just under 290,000 pounds. This is significantly less than a lifetime ISA. So just by running the numbers and comparing apples to apples, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, it'd probably be beneficial if you invested your retirement into a lifetime ISA rather than into a self-invested personal pension. So next up, we have the higher rate taxpayer. And this is for someone whose income is between £50,001 and £150,000 per year. This is the same assumptions as we had with the lifetime ISA and for the basic rate taxpayer that you'll be investing £4,000 per year. So as you are paying 40% tax on your income, the government will pay you back that 40% tax. So for every £1,000 worth of income that you earn, the government takes £400. But if you then invest the £600 remainder into a personal pension, the government will pay you back that £400. This effectively means that you get a 66% bonus on your money. So using the same £4,000, you invest a total of £80,000. Assuming that all that money gets invested back into a personal pension, then you will have invested around £130,000. Now after 30 years, that pension pot is just under £540,000. So taking your 25% tax-free and then being taxed on the rest, it means that your portfolio take-home value after tax is just under £380,000. This isn't as good as the portfolio value in which you'd get from a lifetime ISA, which was just over £400,000. And now finally, we're going to talk about the additional rate taxpayers. And this is for anybody who earns over £150,000 a year. I appreciate this probably isn't very many people, but hey, I'm a lot cheaper than a financial advisor. So if you're in this higher rate taxpayer bracket, please give this video a like. As you're taxed at 45%, for every £1,000 which you earn, the government takes £450. So the remainder of that is £550. Meaning that if you invest £550 into a personal pension, the government will top you up that £450. Meaning that you're effectively getting a bonus of around about 80%. However, just bear in mind, this is the tax you've already paid. So as before, your total investment over the 20 years is £80,000. However, after the top up by the government, assuming that all that money is then reinvested into your pension, your total pot invested is £145,000. This means that after the 30 years, your investment pot is worth just over £585,000. Now, as before, assuming 25% you're taking lump sum tax free and the rest of it is taxed, after tax, it means that your pension pot is worth just under £410,000. This does actually beat the lifetime ISA, but only just. And this just shows how powerful it is that you can protect your money from tax. So just remember that all these personal pension examples, which were taxed, were all drawn down in one big lump sum. However, that was the least tax efficient way of drawing down money. But as I mentioned earlier, we're doing an apples to apples comparison of a lifetime ISA to all the different variables of a pension. There are so many different ways that you could cut your money and draw down different amounts at different times, so it's way more tax efficient. However, 
I'm just doing an example which will really help you understand how tax can affect your investment over the long term. And also bear in mind, people's individual circumstances will be different, so always do your own research and seek professional advice if you need to. And one big key to remember, that when you're investing into a taxable account, it means that the government can change its tax rate at any time. I've used the tax rate as of today. However, in 30 years time, who knows what the tax rate could be. However, by having money that's protected from tax in the form of a lifetime ISA means you'll never get taxed on it. So you'll never have to worry about the different changes in income tax. So overall, what can I say? Well, these examples clearly highlight the lifetime ISA is hugely powerful. Because you're protected from tax, meaning you don't have to pay any tax on your capital gains, dividends or interest, are so beneficial for you in the long term. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you've been able to follow the numbers so that you are clearer exactly how a lifetime ISA compares to a self-invested personal pension, which one works better and which one offers the better tax benefits for you in the future. What I can say is for your first £4,000, it's probably best to invest into a lifetime ISA and have that money which is completely tax-free. If you want to put more than £4,000 per year into retirement, then your first £4,000 goes into a lifetime ISA. And then after that, any money goes to a self-invested personal pension. As always, do your own research and seek professional advice. As always, before you get going with the video, please make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any further videos. And I'll see you next time.